I use the experience I've gained with vacuum tubes, photocells, and circuits to invent the automatic doors. I've worked with color printing presses and packaging machines. I developed an early form of barcoding. But now... Hi, my name is George DeVol. I'm 27 right now. The year is 1939. I attended the New York's World Fair, and I encountered a robot called Electro. His was huge, and he could even speak. Now that I have a word for these inventions that cover manufacturing, construction, and such, it inspired me to create something new. Something big that could help with the industrial world. But I'm not entirely sure what that would be right now. What is a problem that needs to be solved? Well, in factories, humans are rather slow. So then a solution would be a machine that can work fast at manufacturing other products. What materials will I use? Is my budget a problem? How will it look? What will this robot do and how? What are their limits? What are they capable of? How fast and accurate can it be? The year is 1954. I've been looking for a partner for a device called the Program Article Transfer, an industrial robot arm. I'm getting a patent for it, it's just for protection though. I want the control system to be digital, like it will rely on a magnetic drum memory and discrete solid state control components. So far I only know some of the details, like maybe I want this to look this way or just like this. Here are some of the other materials I'll be using. So I want it mostly based off of steel and aluminium. I want it to have sensors that are custom rotary encoders. I also want some accurators, magnetic drum memory as I said before. I added um, this degrees of freedom. That would be for the arm, it would be a three and the wrist a three as well. I attended a cocktail party and I met a lot of people there. I was looking for a partner for the robotic arm project and came across very interesting people. There were some who were kind of weird with their ideas, like this guy. He had the idea to embed a robot that could talk and feel. How crazy would that be? And how would that benefit us in any way? There was another guy who tried to invent something that I don't even know what it is, but it was rather scary. But I found someone. I'll be working with Joseph and Jill Berger. I met him at the party there. He's an executive with an engineer's degree. He and I both share a passion for science fiction, so I'm sure we'll be getting along. So I'm gonna start working on my prototype today. This is the plan already refined. This is just one of the many ones I have, but um, I guess you could call it the base. And we're gonna start today. This is a very important project because it's gonna be installed in the assembly line for General Motors. So we should get a move on. The year is 1961. The robot arm was a success. It is the first robotic arm for factory automatization and everybody loved it. It was first showed in the General Motors as a prototype. It showed how effective and fast it can really work. It built 110 cars per hour. I carried on with the first Unimate, a product for the new Unimation course. It was installed at GM plant in Trenton, New Jersey. And then from then on, it just kept growing. The first prototype Unimate was produced in 1961. GM installed 66 Unimates, and Ford became interested as well. The industrial robot future was certain to be bright with all of the interest and investment. Then, modern industrial robots arm continued to evolve through the 1960s and 70s. In the 1963, the six-joint rancho arm was created to assist handicapped. This followed by tentacle arm, which was
was able to lift the person and have 12 joints. Then there were more specific robots based on needs in the 1967.